In this video, I'll be discussing techniques for making wispy smoke texture assets for particle effects like these. The first smoke texture I'm going to show you how to make is best for broad areas, like for the fog machine vapor in this image. I was trying to focus on making a hard to read silhouette by having irregular organic forms. It wasn't feeling wispy enough, so I broke out the smudge tool and started trying to give the shape a flow. I'm not sure how much this step impacted the final image, but I found it useful for thinking about the motion that this texture is meant to convey. I'd spent a little over 10 minutes working on this texture, so I used Flaming Pear's Ghost plugin to convert the white in my image to transparency. Then I exported as a PNG and tested it out in Unity. First I made an alpha blend material and applied my smoke texture to it. Then I threw together a quick rising smoke sort of particle system so I could see how well the texture was working. It's important to randomize the start rotation of your particle and keep rotation over lifetime values small, or it can be easy to pick out individual smoke particles. Looking at the textures in Engine, I decided that the edges of the particles were too obvious, so I went back into Photoshop and softened them. I think it looks much better now. I fiddled around with the color of her lifetime properties a bit. Often a dark to light or light to dark gradient can add some nice dimensionality to an effect, like the particle color is affected by its density. I figured I'd had enough fiddling with this effect and moved on to the next set of textures. These textures would be for smaller, more stringy effects, like this dense, wet firewood style smoke. For these textures, it's really important to have them be stringy, especially in the center of the texture where they're densest. To do this, I started by laying down an abstract cloud shape and then cutting holes out of it with a low opacity but fairly hard edged round brush. Once I have a shape that I'm pretty happy with, I reinforce the centers of the densest parts of the texture with a thin liner brush.
I then scaled down each of my textures to 512 by 512, half their original resolution, and arranged them into a 2x2 grid. I fix any inconsistencies I see, run the Ghost plugin, and export as a PNG. Back in Unity, I swap out the original smoke texture with the new sprite sheet and turn on texture sheet animation in the particle system. This feature is usually used to animate a particle by switching which texture it uses over the particle's lifetime, but if you set the frames over time value to random between two constants, you can get each particle to randomly choose a single texture from your sprite sheet. This adds a lot of visual variety to any particle system, and I use this technique anytime variety is more important than resolution. Here are the two systems next to each other for comparison, as well as a few different color variations. You can overpower the default brightness and alpha settings for the alpha blended shader by turning up those two properties of the tint color property on any material. By default, both alpha and brightness are set to 50%. Looking back, the comparison I did seemed a bit unfair to the first texture. Really, this sort of particle texture is better suited for broader effects that can take advantage of its added resolution, like this dust effect. Not to ignore the sprite sheet one, I made a little gross dark magic thing. I'm not sure what it is, but it's probably not healthy. Anyway, that's it for this video. Check back for more game art tutorials and demos. I'm Ryan Gatz, thanks for watching.